Let's look what's going on during the Spurs' 12-game losing streak and ask, when will it end? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with with Jeff Jeff Garcia. Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kens 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope you're having a great week. We'll get you through it right here on Locked On Spurs, your first and only stop for all things silver and black. So we appreciate you always checking us out, subscribing to Locked On Spurs, wherever you get your favorite podcast. This episode of Locked On Spurs is brought to you by FanDuel. You want to go to FanDuel right now. FanDuel makes every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets on any winning $5 money line bet. That's a $550 right there, right there for you. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hey, what are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at the Spurs five game losing skid. I'm sorry, 12 game. I wish it was a five game losing skid. It's a 12 game losing skid uh, for your Spurs. We're going to dive into some numbers. What's going on? What does the eye test tell us? And ask a big question. When will it end? We'll be having our guest, Mike Jimenez. Yes. He finally showed up, everybody. He finally showed up. He's on deck in just a few minutes. We'll bring him on right here on Lockdown Spurs. Hey, before we go that, you know, the last episode of Lockdown Spurs, you know, surprise, no, to nobody's surprise, I nerded out. I said Popovich is becoming that line from Batman uh, Begins, you know, or I'm sorry, The Dark Knight. You either uh, live long enough, you live, uh, you know, you live to be the hero, or you live uh, long enough to become the villain. Well, that applies to Pop perhaps right now after what he did Telling Spurs fans to stop booing, uh, but it also, but also another line from The Dark Knight is from Harvey Dent. Yes, shocker! I'm going to nerd out here. The night is darkest just before the dawn. I promise you, the dawn is coming, and that's what I have to say about your Spurs. Yes, 12 game losing streak. I get it. I get it. It sucks. You know, yesterday during um, the game and on social media, a lot of Spurs fans were just uh, tweeting me saying, "Hey." I'm going through it right now. This is rough. This is tough to watch. It, it, I wouldn't be surprised if I find out some TVs got wrecked during this 12-game losing skid. And I, I get it, Spurs fans. This is rough right now. But if I can give you a ray of hope right now is, you know, when Miami is looking like he is going to be that guy for the Spurs in seasons to come. Maybe not this year. He's getting there quick, though. But that is a uh, the dawn that is rising in the horizon for the Spurs is he's going to be that guy. You know, he joined David Robinson versus uh, the Denver Nuggets in a loss where he doing what he did, that stat line, 22 points, uh, you know, six steals. Only one other player has done that. That's David Robinson. He ranks high among uh, defensive numbers. You, you, know, you look at what he's doing so far, and I think the, the dawn that's coming is the fact that perhaps this team won't be the same next year, or I'm not even at the uh, trade deadline, but with him in place, the future is bright, whether that's Keldon's gone or Devin gets traded or they draft a new kid and to pair with Wimby. The point is he's going to be the center point. And so far, so good. He's panning out. You're starting to see little improvement from him. You're starting to see that consistency starting to settle in already, little by little. Not there yet, but he's getting there. You're seeing the defensive numbers. You're seeing the offensive numbers. You're seeing that he's kind of slowly understanding. Get in the paint. Nobody can slow you down. We're getting there. But as soon as he gets there, that's going to be that sunrise at the end uh, of the night, that light at the end of the tunnel. It's Wimbayama. So I get it. It's rough. I I hear it. But you try your best to focus on those little good things along the way. Forget this, too. Hey, if anything, they're showcasing these guys for perhaps flipping them down the road. That could could be a positive. Maybe, hey, give them more minutes, boost their stock somewhat if they can, and maybe flip. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, I get it, Spurs fans. It's tough. It's tough. I'm right there with you. Unfortunately for me and perhaps for Mike Jimenez, we're going to bring him on. We've been through this before. We've seen the depths of how bad it can get in San Antonio, you know, from 21 seasons to getting smoked in the playoffs, everything. We've seen rebuilds. But you kids, you kids, you haven't seen this before. And I understand what you're going through. I'm right there with you. you know, this old man right here you're looking at right now, he's here to be that shoulder to lean on. So hang on in there. It's all it, it, it'll be it'll get better. 
I promise you it'll get better. When we get back, we're going to be joined by Mikey Minnis. We're going to look at that 12-game losing skid, look at some numbers, and then ask when it's going to end. We're going to look at that calendar. Will it end this Thursday night in San Antonio? Does it continue? We're going to try to predict when the Spurs losing ways in. That's coming up next right here on Locked on Spurs. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked on Spurs with Jeff Garcia. But first, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. Look, as the weather gets colder, the NFL stays hot. That's where you got to join FanDuel. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any $5, winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get on the action than right now. Go get it. Go get that app. The app is easy to use. It's a wide range of betting options from player props, over and under, spread, so much more. Why not join FanDuel right now? Look, sports time right now. NFL seating up. NBA action is getting underway. Perfect time for you to get that app, FanDuel, right now. So you want to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Do that right now, everybody. I have it. You should get it to FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top stories, the top sports stories that you want to know about. Uh, and that's with the local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, everybody, this is Nathan Ray Clark from Criminal Minds and Modern Family, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs, hosted by Victor Wimbiana's new best friend, Jeff Garcia. And we are back right here on Locked On Spurs, and look who finally decided to show up. Look who showed up and decided to grace us with his presence. Yeah, Mike I couldn't. Is everybody, MJ acquired taste on X. Go follow him right now. Mike, uh, you're uh, a little late. Yeah, I couldn't big time you a third time. Third time. Once is fine. You know, twice is asking for it. Well, the first the one was time. even worse than the second one because the first one, we set it to your calendar, to your time. To, to cater to you, and you bust that up, and you're like, "What in the h is going on here?" You know, you owe a thanks to uh, Joe Garcia and Rudy Campos. They filled in for you. They you did, they that. did. And I will be honest with you, I have an excuse. I was refereeing high school basketball that day, and the game went long. So my bad. Blame the kids. Blame the kids. Yeah. Again, follow Mikey Menes on X at MJ Acquired Taste. He's gonna talk about his YouTube show uh, later on on this episode of Locked On Spurs. But, Mike, you really haven't missed much since the last time you were on. A shocker, the Spurs still haven't won since the last time you were on. So Not, not surprised at all, man. Yeah. It's just uh, – it's been yeah, a very disappointing season so far. Yeah, yeah. The Spurs, uh, what, 3-13? Uh, not good. They got the Atlanta Hawks up next. We'll talk about that shortly. But a 12-game losing skid tied for the third longest in franchise history. Things are looking down. Let's take a look at what's happening in this 12-game losing skid. For this segment, Mike is going to give you the eye test. I'm going to give you some numbers so we have a little balance there. The first thing I just want to say, we're looking at the last 12 games for your Spurs. They are dead last in point differential. Don't I, I'm surprised it's actually this small of a point differential. It should be larger. But right now they're losing by 15.7 points per game, Mike. They're, they're, they're getting routed, he meant is. It feels like it's 20 points per game. Right? Though. Yeah. The, the thing about it is this, is that if you look at the first half of each game, they tend to be kind of in it yeah. with about two minutes to go in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Then the wheels come off. And I don't yeah. know what's coming on and quick or what's, what's going on during the break during halftime because they come out extremely flat in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. And it's it's funny because we have this ongoing joke about, well, did you watch the Spurs game last night? No, you, you didn't. Let me guess. It was close for about <laughs> two quarters. Then they got routed in the third. And then they caught up a bit in the fourth. And then they got blown out the end. Yeah. It is all C, all V. Just copy and paste. Yeah. Control C, control V. It's, it's just copy and paste. Uh, but it's just it's so funny what's, what's going on right now. It's 12 games. And then mm. the question becomes, when is that thing going to break? Because the way that I look at it, you look at the schedule. I mean, we're going to be exactly one month away from the last victory that the Spurs had. And the question for me is, will they have another victory before Christmas? Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I'm looking at right now. 
yeah, it's not looking pretty. Uh, you, you, you know, we'll definitely we'll answer that question. We'll try to answer that question when it will break the, the streak in just a few seconds. But giving you some more numbers here, Mike, you're absolutely right about joking around with people saying, oh, do you watch the Spurs game? Let me guess. This happened X, Y, and Z. The numbers show that. So in the first quarter, Spurs 26, 27.6 points per game, points per period, and then 28.1 in that first for opponents. So you're right. They're hanging in there. And look how fast the wheels come off, okay? Second quarter, Spurs average about 28 points, opposition 31. Third quarter, Spurs average about 25, opposition 33. Final frame, Spurs allow 30 points, Spurs score 28. So you're, you're, you're absolutely right. You don't need a, a genius to numbers and crunch those numbers to see that. They just come off quick. Now, Shetty Osman said recently that, the team does tend to panic when they when they are in situations like that. They're holding on to lead or they're in games and a team makes a punch at them and they're out. But that's just a sign of still immaturity on the NBA court, not them personally, but just maturity on the court, learning how to deal with those situations, learning that, hey, this is the NBA. You're not going to walk on the court and, hey, we're going to win or we're going to be competitive. No, you got to bring it 48 minutes. And that's what we're not seeing in, the, in these 12 games. They're not competitive for 48 minutes. You, you might get an occasional hiccup here. The third period, as you mentioned, Jimenez, they tend to fight back. And the first period, they're definitely fighting in. But, man, when they fall flat, they fall flat. And we talked about the point differential. Not only that, in the NBA era right now that we're living in, where it's all three-point happy, they are 29th in the last 12 games in three-point percentage. They're only hitting about 33%. Worst team is Memphis hitting about 32 So it's not that far. Jimenez, so you have – Lack of defense with the point differential, lack of offense, at least in one area of three point shooting. I mean, it's it's right now you just go up and down the court. He managed to be OK. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. I mean, that's what it feels like right now. He managed oh, most definitely. And a lot of those three point shots that are not going down are wide open looks. And it's one of those things like, well, what more do you need? to be set up for success when it comes to that. There's lots mm -hmm. of reasons why the Spurs aren't winning. Yeah. You know, there's a talent problem when it comes to this team. I mean, I made a tweet a while back saying that the Spurs only have two legitimate starters, NBA starters on the roster, mm -hmm. being Devin Vassell and Victor Wembanyama. You might make a, a case for a Keldon Johnson, uh, but aside from that, I mean, Zach Collins would not start for half of the teams in the NBA. Jeremy Sohan would not start for half the teams in the NBA. And I'd say Keldon's probably 50-50 when it comes to things, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the back end of the roster really probably is G League talent. So it's just a very it's a team that's that doesn't have enough talent. It's a team that doesn't have enough veteran leadership. And we talked about this before a couple of weeks ago about how you punch them in the face once mm -hmm. glass Joe effect, man. It, they, mm -hmm. they just go down. They don't have that fight within them to bounce back they, they and, and you see that because they if you look at some of these games that they've that they've lost right this 12 game losing streak i mean there's probably been what four five games where they were up by double digits mm -hmm. so it's not like they're getting blown out from the get-go they play tough early on they lose the lead and then they don't know how to scrape back and i'm not a big believer of well they're just going to get better over time just roll the ball out there again and just have them play that game over and over and over again no, you need to have leadership on the court, and they don't have any leaders on the court because they don't have yeah. anybody on the court who's been playoff battle tested, and it's just so disheartening. You know, you, you watch these games, you want to support this team. I mean, I was thinking about how on fire this team was, or the city of San Antonio was back in May when we oh, won man, the lottery. Everybody like, was we're coming yeah. back, baby. The Spurs yeah. are back, <laughs> and now. It's just one of those things where, like, what the heck is going on over here? Who's at fault, and who's the one that should be held accountable for all of this? Yeah, that's definitely a great episode uh, topic for another uh, Locked On Spurs. But, again, right now, on this segment right now, we're looking at the numbers. We're looking at the eye test. Jimenez is giving you the eye test. I'm giving you the numbers to see what's going on in this 12-game bluesy streak. Now, aggressiveness you know sometimes you see this team not aggressive enough Popovich has said it uh before saying you know the other team was more physical the other team wanted it more and the numbers show that so right now this 12 game losing streak came in as the Spurs are averaging a mere 18 free throw attempts that's good for 28th in the NBA right now 
at least in the last 12 games. The only team that's worse than them are the Nets. They only get to the line about 17 times. So there you go. They're not getting aggressive. They're not trying to cause havoc and get the opposition to foul them or something. So you're, you're, you're seeing the lack of that right now uh, as far and, – and it gets even worse. So you look at the fact that with the Spurs, you got to wonder, like, is it just simply a lineup issue? Is it the fact they're not getting to the free throw line because maybe that's what the plays are not called for? When we can get to the free throw line easily, almost every time he touches the ball, you see that they don't even do that. Just, you know, oftentimes he gets passed up. The Malachi Brown will come up the court, shoot the ball when Wimby maybe has Mike Jimenez on him underneath the underneath the block. You know, it's it's that bad, Jimenez. Well, one thing I'll say about Wemby, though, is that he's getting to the line a little bit better. He's probably the yeah, only he's progressing. Player. Yeah, he's yes. progressing. Yeah, and he's getting some some calls. And we, we've seen a lot of calls that have happened where they've been late whistles, where he's begged for the call. Mm -hmm. And they're legitimate calls. It's not like he's trying to get bailed out. They're legitimate calls. Uh, but you look at the last five games of him at the free throw line, five of six, one of one, seven of seven, five of five, six of seven. The guy is knocking down his free throws when he mm -hmm. does get to the line. It's like 24 out of the last 26. I mean, he's his percentage is going up. Uh, but it's the rest of the guys. I mean, uh, if it's not yeah. Wemby, Vassell is, is aggressive enough. No one else is trying to do much of anything when it comes to attacking mm -hmm. the basket. The eye test is just so miserable right now. Part of it could be the fact that, again, we've had this comp, this, this debate before. And I think more and more people are wanting to get off of the whole experiment of Sohan at at, mm -hmm. at uh, point guard. Um, it's just it's disheartening because you don't you're not seeing the fight, you're not seeing the aggressiveness, and what you're seeing is a bunch of players who are just looking at each other like who's going to take the lead. One you other know? telling uh, stat in this 12 game losing streak, I was looking at the numbers right now. Uh, is turnovers. Um, shockingly, I was surprised about this. The Spurs are not the worst team as far as coughing the ball up in the last 12 games, at least during this losing skid. Uh, but it, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. They're, they're still uh, amongst the worst. So right now, during the losing streak, they average about 16 turnovers a game. That's good for 26 in the NBA. They happen in bunches, too, if you, if you yeah. notice that. some yeah. th These turnovers aren't staggered throughout the game. They, they tend to give up three and, or four. And they always come at the time. worst possible time. Right. Well, that's either Sohan, like he's he's doing the point guard duties and he, he you know, somebody picks his pocket. Was, was, wasn't it a few games ago at home during that four game uh, stand they had at home where one of the players said, oh, yeah, we knew how to, uh, to attack the Spurs. We just go at Jeremy Sohan. I think it was one of the Clipper players. Yeah, it was. We just go at him and we pressure him and that should do it. The book is out. There's So there are some turnovers right now. Now, Wemby's not totally innocent on this. He does turn the ball over a lot. So there's that, and just collectively, the team doesn't seem to value the ball as much. So that's another big reason why the Spurs are on a 12-game losing skid, Jimenez. The body language, too, man. Uh, the the, mm. the, 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 the you, you saw Wemby after one of the games. I think they lost the 10th in a row. Yeah. And the look on his face when he was walking off the court, it was borderline anger. It wasn't frustration. Yeah. It, he looked angry. There have been some points in the game where – uh, I saw one time Devin Vassell did this, one time Keldon Johnson, which is weird because they're the ones that have a little bit of, of uh, more experience on this team mm -hmm. where I don't want to say they gave up on a play, but they just gave a look on the play like where they're just shrugging, like throwing their hands up, like, what are we going to do here? Yeah. Like, what just happened? And it's frustrating to watch, and uh, I just kind of wonder how they're going to get out of this funk mm -hmm. and how long it's going to take. Looking at some of the defensive numbers uh, you know, right now, now, overall, you know, not the uh, 12 game uh, losing skid. I'm sorry, no, within the 12 game, excuse me, within the 12 game losing skid, the Spurs are 27th in defensive rating right now, 120. So, again, uh, their defense is not up to snuff right now. You look at uh, other defensive numbers in the last 12, the Spurs are not causing, you know, second chance or just opportunities for themselves. They only average a mere 6.6 .6 steals per game. That's good for 24th in the NBA during these 12 games. So, yeah, you know, you mix in a little bad offense. By the way, they're not shooting the ball well. I think they're ranked near the bottom in field goal percentage right now. So it's just everything just seems to be colliding right now, Jimenez. Uh, you, you know, before we switch to our next so segment, what if you could pick one thing that you would do right now to help the Spurs, Spurs cure what ails them, what would it be? 
I don't want to say that this is the cure, but uh, wouldn't it be interesting if the Spurs start playing better and start winning because Trey Jones is starting with Sohan yeah. being out with an injury? Yeah, and that's what baffles me is that you would think that the Spurs have great statisticians and analytics, you know, where they can just present sheets of paper and be, look, look at the big <laughs> difference. Let's just stop doing this. But they don't. They stop. I mean, you don't have to look at the numbers. I don't have to. The listeners and viewers don't have to do the numbers. We all know the eye test, the numbers. We all seen them. It's Trey stubborn. Jones is, it's 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 vastly better when Trey Jones is on the court. But here we are. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I would stop the experiment immediately. You know, it's not, you know, stop the bleeding already. They're down. Okay, they're down. They're down. They're down. Coaching staff. They're down. They'll kick up more when they're down. But yet they're still kicking them. So one for me is. Uh, we heard recently that Popovich said that they're not going to insert Vassell into the starting lineup as of now. I mean, who knows? Maybe that might change against the Hawks because they want to limit his minutes. I don't know. If that's uh, you know an, uh, an injury thing, but at this point, just put him out there with with Wemby. Put your two best players out there on the court. Maybe that might generate some mojo, momentum heading out of that first and competitive throughout the rest of the game. He missed. Now, I will say this about Devin Vassell, though. I mean, Devin Vassell, A, has not outwardly complained about that, and he has not seen a drop in production by coming off the bench. There are a lot of players out there who, you know, they need to start or they don't get into the rhythm that they need. Uh, yeah. But Vassell, the last uh, two games, 10 for 19, 7 for 13, mm -hmm. I mean, the guy is a pro. He's the best player on the Spurs roster as of now. He is Michael Jimenez. Make sure to follow him on X at MJ Acquired Taste. When we get back. We're going to look at the calendar and try to predict when will the Spurs get another W? When will they get win number four? You heard that right. Win number four on the season. That's coming up next right here on Locked On Spurs. This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Before we continue our chat with Mike Jimenez, I want to talk to you about Price Picks. Hey, Price Picks is the daily, largest daily fantasy sports you'll ever need. You go get that app right now. It's, it's the best. It's the easiest. It's the most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. That's it. So instead of battling thousands of other players, or sharks, or, you know, you're just, just people you don't want to play with. It's just really just you versus the numbers. That's it. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Look, price picks is the most fun you will have. You can win perhaps up to 25 times your money. This basketball season, you just select two or more players, pick more or less in the projected stats, and place your entry. Simple, easy, fast. Look, they even have this op opportunity for you to play along some of the best of the best of celebrities. They have this thing called uh, Price Picks Favorite Players. You can play with a rapper Meek Mills, comedian Andrew Schultz. You can find that on Community Plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries to some of the biggest names in Price Picks community each week. And look, they even have a reboot policy. So let's just say one of your entries, um, you know, gets out, gets injured in the first half in a football or a basketball game, and they don't return in the second half. That player is then rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform that offers insurance policy and player insurance policy. How about that? Price Picks offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this basketball season. I use it. You should use it too. Go get Price Picks right now. Hey. PricePicks.com slash locked on NBA. That's where you're going to go to. Use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. I repeat, PricePicks.com slash locked on NBA. The code you want to use is locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. I also want to talk to you about Muslingers Drive Through Coffee. You want to go to Muslingers right now, San Antonio, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. That's in the 281 area. They're open every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. They have a great selection of drinks from uh, dairy alternatives to the Red Bull Infused Lightning Bolt Series to the OG OJ. That's the Orange Julius recreated only at Muslingers. They even have the Sub-Zero. That's a hat tip to Frank Harris, UTSA. There's the Alien. You should know who that's about. That's about Victor Wimbayama. That's a full can of Red Bull, green apple, kiwi mixed together. Delicious. They have mini donuts, so they're not just about drinks. They got it all. Friendly staff, great location, uh, uh, over 300 five-star reviews cannot be wrong. Seriously, they are a proud local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs. They proudly serve the San Antonio community. 
and you make sure you follow them on social media on X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Pick a platform. They are there. Threads? Sure, they're there too. At Muslinger S A T X. That's all one word. Look, I've been enjoying them being a sponsor of Locked On Spurs. I enjoy everything that they offer on that menu, and it's a big menu. Trust me, you want to go check it out yourself. Go to Muslinger Stripe Through Coffee right now, San Antonio, 2404,000 Oak Stripe. Open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Life is too short for a bland coffee. Hey guys, this is Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to a Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. It's morphin' time. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Mike Jimenez. He didn't run off everybody. He's still here. He didn't he didn't big time me for the last portion. See, that's the next level for Jimenez. Big timing me during Locked On Spurs. That would be wild, Jimenez. Mid show big time. I like it. I like no, it. No, don't you know, do it. You're yeah, out of your mind. Don't you even think about one it. One day I'll do it, but I'll have like Joe Garcia or Rudy Campos Jr. be behind me. You know, we'll tag team. And they, they just like this. So just basically like, okay, yeah, we're filling in for Jimenez. He yeah, shift change. Right <laughs> yeah, he just, a shift change right now. Yeah, make sure to follow Jimenez on X at MJ Acquired Taste. Now we're going to look into the crystal ball. We're going to figure out when will this losing skid end. Uh, last time we played this game, Jimenez, I had picked the Warriors as my wild card game uh, as, a, as a team that the Spurs could beat. Obviously, that didn't happen. So we're going to do that again. We're going to pick a game that we think will end and then that wild out of left field game where you're like, well, how do the Spurs pull that off you know, to snap that losing skid? So I'm going to go first few minutes. I'm going to pick my – not my wild card pick game. I'm going to pick the game I think they're going to end it in, and that is this coming week, this Thursday at the Frost versus the Atlanta Hawks. DeJounte Murray, Patty Mills back in the building. A lot of energy. I think the four-day rest that the Spurs are going to get is going to help them a lot, clear their heads, recover a bit. It might do well for uh, Devin Vassell. So I think everybody will be recharged, raring to go. I got Hawks getting that L, courtesy of your Spurs. Jimenez, who do you got? You know, that's not a bad pick because you take a look at who the – Spurs are playing this month. Most of the teams, especially between now and Christmas, are all yeah. 500 or better. The Hawks being at 500 themselves right now. Yeah. That's actually a very good pick. Uh, my pick would actually be on the road Monday, December 11th wow. against the Rockets. Uh, Spurs played the Rockets well earlier this year. Uh, even if you go into preseason, they do. That's also a very young team. Uh, so I think that that would be the surprise one that they can pop up and get. You know, because they'll be favored to lose that game. They'll be on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, but you look at the Spurs schedule, man, from the Hawks to the Pelicans to the Rockets. Rockets yeah. have a winning record. The Lakers back to back. Mm -hmm. Pelicans again. Then Giannis and the Bucks. So I think the skid will end. Worst case scenario. Good God, we're doing a worst case scenario. Here we go. Here we go, you man. Is after 19 losses in a row wow. to the Bulls on the road December 21st. Wow. That, I think, is that, the worst-case scenario. We're not going to hit 20. Is, We're not going to hit 20. That is brutal. That is brutal. My surprise Spurs win to snap the streak is actually going to be one of the Laker games in San Antonio. I, I could definitely see the Lakers having one of those Laker-esque games where Anthony Davis will show up. LeBron right. is your nervy. He can. You know, I could see something like that. I'm going to go with that December 13th game, that first game uh, in that back-to-back -back set the Spurs have versus the LAL. So I'm going to go with the December 13th Lakers-Spurs game at the Frost as my wild card. How did the Spurs get a W? Where did that come from to snap their losing streak win? Uh, yeah, You know, it's just so sad. Jimenez has come to this, hasn't it? It is, but I like the fact that you chose that game for one particular reason. It's because the crowd will mm -hmm. probably be energized so much for that game because, A, it's the Lakers. Well well, well a lot of laker a lot of laker fans do show up too. that's exactly what i'm saying yeah. that is you're also going to have about 30 percent of the of the people there going for the lakers yeah which is going to agitate the 70 percent that are going for the spurs yeah. it's going to be a little bit more electric and it's going to yeah. be kind of a playoff atmosphere because it is the lakers and they may not be our number one rival but they're one of the two or three teams right. that this city hates the most mm -hmm. and then you have lebron out there and a lot of spurs fans don't like lebron yeah. um i think that's a very good pick actually if the Spurs boo DeJounte Murray this Thursday, does Pop do it again? Take the mic and tell everybody to stop booing. Because DeJounte, he's not at the level of Kawhi, but he did have some choice stuff to say about the Spurs after the trade. A lot of Spurs fans still remember that. Do you think he'll he'll ever do that again? 
No, and if it did happen, I would hope that somebody in the Spurs front office would get one of those circus hooks and just <laughs> pull him out and just say, dude, you're done. You're done. Just go ahead and retire by yeah. now. Hey, hey, guess what, everybody? There, DeJounte will be met with some booze. Maybe yeah. not at the level of Kawhi, but there will be booze for him from the, oh, it'll take 15 years to what he said about the Spurs playing with him being, what would he say, like, mind after or something like that or he was yeah. cold or something like that he, he talked a little bit of yeah. uh about the city uh he yeah. liked the fans but it was about the city he wasn't uh yeah. as attractive to him and i get it man i i get it but yeah uh the booze are going to be minor compared to Kawhi, Kawhi yeah. because Kawhi like completely you know put the knife to the heart of the of the franchise uh whereas at least with dejounte uh we're gonna see some pretty good payoff when it comes to the draft picks that we're getting from them mm -hmm. because they haven't been conveyed yet and uh, they're coming down the road wow it's come to this everybody we're, we're we're looking worst case scenarios month out maybe they can end the losing skit it's it's bad hopefully the spurs will make us all wrong and win as early as this thursday crossing fingers he is mike jimenez follow him on x at mj acquire taste what you got cooking on YouTube? I know you and Joe Garcia got a show going on there, don't y'all? Yeah, so we do it as of right now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But I'm tinkering with the idea of just coming back Monday through Friday and just making oh, it nice. a whole week. So nice. I'm, I'm thinking about it, you know, because make it happen. We've done it. We've done the show from his house on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But I've taught myself to do the show on my own because Joe is actually out for the next couple mm -hmm. of weeks or so, yeah. and I've been doing this at home, and it's gone off without a hitch. I mean, it's 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 gone perfectly fine. And uh, maybe, just maybe, I'll, I'll use this as an opportunity to uh, do this uh, the full five days a week. Uh, maybe we'll do that at the beginning of the year and whatnot. But uh, we do it live from 1030 to about 1145 or noon on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We also are available on all the major podcast platforms like Spotify and iHeart app and all that, all that stuff. And uh, we talk about sports, a lot of Spurs talk, a lot of UT mm -hmm. football right now. Uh, a lot of Cowboys talk NFL. Uh, we get into pop culture. We get into nostalgic things. It's a fun show. Uh, Going to be honest with you, I've been uh, I've been very very uh, hard on some of the Spurs players uh, uh, on, on the coaching staff as mm -hmm. well in the front office. Uh, so we are, are unfiltered when it comes to it all, and it's just a it's a fun time, and people get to interact with us uh, in real time on our YouTube platform. Don't ever big time me again, man. I'm gonna try not to, but I don't think I've ever. Have I ever big time you? you? You have a couple of times. Actually. I have. I, have, uh, I don't yeah. know. It hasn't been as many times as I big time you. It, it, it's probably like I've done it like ten times and you've done it twice. Okay, so there's a there's a ratio that's uh, it's a ratio, more. There's, like, there's at least a five <laughs> to one ratio, right? Uh, but uh, what can I say? I'm a busy guy, man. You know, You're a busy I'm, man. You're a busy guy. I know exactly. <laughs> Follow Jimenez on X at MJ Acquired Taste. Hey, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. We'll be back tomorrow. More silver and black talk. More Wimby talk. Hopefully, we'll soon be talking about wins. Hopefully, that'll happen. And, uh, yeah, find us everywhere. Ken's Fine Plus app, YouTube, uh, Spotify, iTunes. The list goes on and on. Seriously, there's no excuse for you to not check out Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. So, for Mike Jimenez, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.